Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. I'll start with Paris Rapeseed. This market has recently been one of unfulfilled disappointments. It has all happened since the unfulfilled potential of the late summer ascending broadening wedge pattern which deviated from a false break lower and tempted all with a possible mid-September to date bullish halfway hesitation. It has all been a series of unfulfilled disappointments. The latest in this series has been last week's weekly key reversal up. Now I know I should not expect an immediate response on a daily level to what is after all a weekly pattern. However, throw me a bone, especially after all the false moves we've seen, but no, 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 no. This week we've headed lower. Instead, I have to say that the recent action may be potentially morphing as a pattern once again. Since mid-September, that what was originally looking like a bullish halfway hesitation that last time looked like it might possibly be a, a head and shoulders top is now increasingly looking like a possible ascending triangle. Want to bet that this change link hasn't finished with its patterns? Yeah. Anyway, the parameters of the ascending triangle are currently upper flat trend line is in the 685 even area and the rising lower trend line is currently 658 and a half. It's too early to give ideas on the break higher or lower from this pattern. That actually may be next time. Winnipeg Canola. There are, as I've previously said here on many occasions, two patterns in operation here, both hang, having run to fruition and we're both fighting to have their results to be the more dominant. We have a descending triangle from early July and a sideways triangle also from July. The upper trend line for both is the same, the broken May to date downtrend currently at 829.90. The market broke higher over this seven weeks ago. Now for the descending triangle, we have a base on the congestion between 8.19 to 8.19.40. The second pattern, the sideways triangle has, or should I say had an uptrend, uh, breached eight and 10 weeks ago, currently at 94.30. This breach was an odd one. You see prices initially continued more or less sideways, then started to move along higher up along this same uptrend. Indeed, until three weeks ago, we'd never been separated from it, though these past four weeks have seen a more acute bullish angle of attack. Anyway, seven weeks ago, I gave some levels on the upside. Last week, the last of these was finally achieved. Thus, to recap, for a new smaller descending triangle with an initial topside target X2 in the 930.80 area and a secondary target X3 in the 946.5 area. For the ragged sideways triangle with an initial potential target X4 in the 968 even level and a secondary target um, target X5 at the previous high of the mark in the 1008 area. This week with a changeover gap lower but we've not really extended that move and instead maybe, uh, just maybe, we might have a bull channel or perhaps more likely an ascending broadening wedge pattern formed since mid-October. It's not certain but it is a pattern that currently fits the market. And that's currently uh, capped between nine, uh, uh, supported between 973.90 and capped at 1052.60. The only other topside resistance of note is a 50% projected Fibonacci line at 1093.10, and that's way above the current pattern. As for the downside, well, just keep a lookout for the extension of the uptrend previously mentioned here, and that's currently at 942.60. That seems to be the key to this move on the upside. Bursa Malaysia Palm Crude Palm Oil. First off, please continue to try and ignore the color changes in the labels on the daily chart. There is no special significance to them. It is just my charting system playing silly buggers. Anyway, eight weeks ago, a gapping move lower finally halted just short of testing down to the congestion supports between 40.10 and 39.53. These supports have previously been bolstered by the rising long moving average, currently 42.73. This halt and reversal back up with a gap set the stage for the start of another move, a move I had intimated weeks beforehand. You see the move up from the low to the high back eight weeks ago gave us a weekly key reversal up that very week. Additionally, the follow on higher seven weeks ago, especially the gapping moves higher, gave us a rare monthly key reversal up here in September. So why are these moves so anticipated and important in my eyes other than 
as their own standout patterns. Well, it's because a little while ago I laid out a scenario for a potential very, very large bullish pattern. It was to look at the whole of the May today action, including the sideways weeks over August and September as an extended V bottom. Now this pattern is not that common, but it did and does have some heavy merit here at this time. And by heavy, I mean really heavy merit. So to give you an idea of the potential for the move higher, let's look at the action since the low of July up to the high of August as the size of any potential move which may happen. Thus, it is quite large. Plus, if you had looked at the action as a further simple bull flag stroke, bullish halfway hesitation pattern happening at the same time, then it grows in significance. Yet, if we looked at the larger extended V pattern, then it would not only have the backing of the June to date action, but all the action since May. That is quite a lot. Quite a lot. Initial idea on this, just being a large bull flag, bullish halfway hesitation, well that gives a potential target X in the 5375 area. Originally that was way above the current top of the market and a very, very, very big ask. There is an even bigger secondary target for this pattern up in the 5525 area, but I'm not going to go into that too much until we see prices testing target X. So far we have seen a peak at 5326 within spitting distance of target X. Okay, so that has been the scenario I've been working under. Now, three final points. The first is that the bullish Andrews pitchfork for the 2021 action, especially the middle time, currently at 5098, has been and still is the main bullish incentive here. The market is kept by this bullish Andrews pitchfork and it is wonderfully still maintaining its validity and prominent bullishness. The second is the very recent mid September to date bull channel. This seemed to have some merit, but three weeks ago the market gapped out of it on the downside, and we've not seen any real attempt to head lower since that time. So that's something to note. Finally, the simplest and perhaps the most bearish of all the ideas. It is a look at the last five weeks and this week as a potential topping action. Again, it is still too early on this, but the longer we stay up here doing nothing much other than ranging between the all-time high, okay, uh, let's actually say the new downtrend from the all-time high currently at 52.59 and the support in the 5,000 to 4,900 area then the more this pattern may grow in traction I just wish you to know that you should not be immune to this as an idea I will comment more on this one as I see things happen now I think I'll leave it at that for now I can only say what I said this time last week again hoping next week things will become more clearer but they probably won't. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final bit.